People often ask me about my setup and the different tools I use as an illustrator. So I thought I'd make a video about that. I'll talk about all the different things that I use, my drawing tools, the different apps that I use, different settings. I'll show you a little bit of my office space. All right, let's check it out. Hey, this is Editor Chris. Just wanted to make a quick apology. I was editing the video for this and I had got done cutting everything up and trying to color correct as best that I could. And then I went to do the audio and realized that I had been plugging in the microphone into the audio monitoring, monitoring port. I don't even know what that is. Um, I'm very new to this camera world. As you can see, I kind of have this talking head video thing locked in pretty well. But that's only because I copied someone's exact settings that I found on the internet. You'll notice that when I'm filming from a different place and when I'm filming the overhead, I still have a little bit of a learning curve, so I apologize for that. As I learn more, the quality of videos will improve and we're getting there a little bit at a time. So thanks for your understanding in my stupidity. So I use a newer MacBook Pro. I think it's the M1 Pro chip. I can't remember. It's one of the newer ones. It's uh, 15 inch, I think. I think that's the size. You see it? It's right there. And I have it hooked up to a Wacom, don't get me started on the name again, uh, Cintiq 24HD. Um, I have this Cintiq hookup I have this Cintiq hooked up to an arm that lets it move around so I can go ahead and kind of move it to where I want it to be. Print it down like that. Gives me a good drawing position. And then, and then when I would want to use it as a display, put it like that, move it up, get it off my desk. Really like the ability to get it out of the way. I have a, um, a Bluetooth keyboard. It's not an Apple one, but it looks like an Apple one, which I like. It's um, Matthias. Matthias is the brand. Um, I like having the Bluetooth one because when I'm working on the Cintiq, I slide this off to the side and then I get some of this action going where I'm drawing here, doing key commands like this. I'm not a huge key command person. I wish that I used them more. I have some friends that are just like key command. I was going to say magicians, but I feel like I brought up magicians in every episode. They're just really good key commands. Key commands. They remember them. For me, I'm hitting the brackets to make the brushes bigger and the brushes smaller, and um, maybe holding the space bar to move my canvas around. Or, uh, I don't know, my key commands are minimal, I'm gonna be honest with you. They should be better. But, even though I have this big, fancy Cintiq, I hardly ever use it. The reason I hardly ever use it is because this little iPad right here. I've been doing the majority of my work on an iPad for quite a while now. I just prefer the drawing experience to the Cintiq. The Cintiq is great, don't get me wrong. It's, it's fantastic, it's got good resolution, it's got great pressure sensitivity, but the iPad is a great size. The resolution is unmatched, the color is perfect. The interface and the intuitiveness of the hand gesture is really great. I love the drawing apps. I personally work in Adobe Fresco, whether you use Procreate or whatever else, just feel like they're the apps specifically set up for drawing and they just do drawing. It's really great. When I'm working on my computer with the Cintiq, I'm drawing in Photoshop, which again is a good experience, but I just like that when I'm using a drawing app, it's just meant for drawing. It doesn't have all that other stuff that Photoshop has. I don't know if that matters or if that's silly, but I just like the streamlined setup of a, a, an app just designed for drawing. And also because I use Fresco, 
if I need to work on the computer, I can just go right back and forth with my files seamlessly, which which is, again, it's great. I think I've said great a lot. Great. I think that brings up a point too. I think a lot of the illustrators starting out feel like they need all this fancy, all these fancy supplies to work. And you don't need a Cintiq. Cintiqs are very expensive. There's, there's no need for it. If I didn't have a Cintiq, I probably wouldn't buy one because the iPad's great. It's perfect. If I need to work in Photoshop and I didn't have a Cintiq, I would just have this hooked up using Apple Sidecar, which lets you use it as a tablet, or using AstroPad if I wanted some more control over that. The only time I really use the Cintiq is if I'm doing like an animation assignment that requires a little more precision in terms of not being just like a simple animated loop or morph that I could do in, in Fresco on the iPad. If it's something that I need to like sync up to audio or there's like timing involved, I will do that in Photoshop because there's a lot more control working on a, with a full video timeline. So when I'm doing that, I'm using the Cintiq. But again, if I didn't have the Cintiq, I could do the same thing with my iPad hooked up like a Cintiq. I got this weird looking spaceship mouse made by Anchor. This is sort of a, a leftover thing from when I used to be a graphic designer. I was getting a lot of um, carpal tunnel from using a mouse a lot, but it's crazy to think about because I have been a full-time illustrator for like 12 years now. So, um, but when I was a designer working an illustrator with a mouse all the time, carpal tunnel. Having a mouse like this gives you more uh, neutral hand position, so it takes the pressure off your wrist. Pretty neat. So if you're someone with carpal tunnel, maybe get a handshake mouse. I think that's what they're called. If they're not, let's uh, let's start calling them handshake mouses. Uh, also, I have a um, desk with a corner here. I like that because when I'm working on the Cintiq, pull it forward, I have a little armrest here, but I can still get nice and close. I can really get in there and work, which is pretty cool. Also, on the Cintiq, I forgot about this because I don't use it as much. I use the felt tip nibs. They feel more like the uh, felt tip sign pens that I used to use before I switched to digital, which again was a very long time ago. This is the only thing I miss when drawing on the iPad is the felt tip nib. If there's a felt tip Apple Pencil nib, let me tell you. Um, also, uh, I use a paper-like screen protector on my iPad, which gives it a little bit more tooth. I don't like the experience of drawing on the straight glass screen. It's a little too slippery. The paper-like one is fantastic, but it's a little pricey. And if you didn't want to pay for that, really any of the matte screen protectors that you can get on like Amazon for five, 10 bucks, those are nearly as good as the paper-like. It just makes it, gives you a little resistance when you're drawing. Um, some people are concerned that it wears down the Apple pencil tip too fast. I draw a lot, um, a lot. And I think an Apple pencil tip probably lasts me a couple months, maybe a little bit more. Usually I keep using it until something goes wrong and then I'm like, why is this not working? And then I look at my pencil tip is like, Oh, so when your Apple Pencil tip, that's a pro tip. If your Apple Pencil tip is like, then it's, it's time to switch and get a new one. I usually like to have a couple in my drawer ready to go. Also, um, I have a Epson printer over there. It is a semi-large format. It's the Epson 15,000. I have a lot. I've had a lot of printers in the past and most of them are hot garbage or crazy expensive. And even the crazy expensive ones are very finicky. This has been the least finicky inkjet printer that I've had. And it prints amazing quality and it prints up to uh, 13 by 19. So I do daily drawing prints from time to time. 
or if I need to print something out for something else. I do them right on there. It's got um, archival quality ink, has six different ink cartridges, different colors to get better quality. Um, and it's pretty affordable for a large format printer. I'll put a link in the description along with links to this other stuff that I have if you're interested. So I do the majority of my drawing in Adobe Fresco on the iPad. If you're interested in why I use Adobe Fresco over Procreate or any other apps, you should check out my video comparing Adobe Fresco and Procreate. It goes into a lot of detail about the differences between the two apps and why I prefer Fresco. You may have noticed I have this uh, weird two-finger glove on. This thing just helps my hand to slide nicely across the screen and not get kind of stuck from doing some long line or I'm like, this is great from a sweaty hand. I don't know if it's ever happened to you, but sliding your hand on glass uh, is not that nice. But with this little glove, it works. I picked up this one on Amazon. It's pretty crappy. You can see it's falling apart here. You can see the threads are coming apart here. It's a, it's a bit of a mess, but they're cheap and I should probably get a new one. All right, so let me open up a new document so I can just walk you through some of the brushes that I use and my setup and preferences and some little tweaks that I do. So I typically work around 4,000 by 5,000 pixels. Obviously, if I'm setting up a file for a specific project, I'll use those sizes, but I find that working in this size gives me the flexibility to um, hey. zoom in and not have things be pixelated. It's pretty high res and I just have more control over my brushes with a, a little bit of a higher resolution. If I'm doing something that's animated, uh, I'll probably go a little bit smaller just to keep the file size smaller, but I usually don't go below 2000 pixels wide because if you go smaller than that, you'll find that the drawing experience isn't as good and you won't be able to get a good feel for your line work because there won't be enough pixels. So when I'm starting a new drawing, I sketch like, you know, your regular illustrator. And I just have a pencil brush that I use, um, which is one of Kyle Webster's brushes, which is free in Fresco. Um, it's his Perfect Pencil 2. It's just a normal uh, pencil-like experience. Even though I'm working digitally, I still like to have a pencil line. I feel like it's easier to sketch when it looks like a sketch and it doesn't look like uh, my final line work. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how I think about it. Um, if I'm sketching, I usually pick like a gray color like a pencil and then I just start, you know, sketching, draw a little smiley face and then move on to drawing a, a sweet skull. Um, but yeah, so I, I use a, a pencil brush to sketch, and then I'll usually, once I have a sketch that I like, I'll bring down the opacity, make a new layer, and then I will draw on top of that with one of the inking brushes that I really like. So let me show you, let me delete that bad drawing, and show you my brushes that I like. So the, the brush that I use the most for my line work is this other Kyle Webster brush called Too Smooth to Be Forgotten. And this is also, um, this is from his ink box set. And again, all of Kyle Webster's brushes are free if you have the premium version of Fresco. And it's really easy to find new brushes in here. You just go to all, and then you can click at the bottom where it says add brushes, and then discover new brushes. And then you can find all of Kyle's brushes right here, which is pretty cool. And you just tap them and add, and then they're in your brush folder, which is pretty great. As I was saying, the one that I use the most is Too Smooth to be Forgotten. And this is just a simple brush that has some good pressure sensitivity with tapering lines. One of the things I mess with a lot when I'm drawing in Fresco is this smoothing option. So if you have smoothing turned all the way up, 
it helps you get like a really nice smooth line. And I like to have a lot of smooth lines in my drawings, but sometimes I don't have things that are smoother. If I want to draw faster, I turn that smoothing all the way down. And then if I drew that same line, you know, it would have that lumpy quality. If you're familiar with my work, you know that sometimes I do things that are more rough like that. Or if I have like a, sometimes I do lettering that's like really, you know, jagged like this. So if I were to try to get this same, the same look with the smoothing on, it wouldn't work. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I turn smoothing all the way up and try to draw like that, it, it's smoothing it out. So that's the smoothing. I like that you can turn it up and down with the same brush so that you can get the same line and same look but have the control for it to be smooth or not smooth. So I use that a lot. Another inking brush that I like is Kyle's Rough Inking Brush. As you can see, they're almost all Kyle Webster brushes because he's a brush magician. And they're also free in fresco, so isn't that cool? So this one is similar in feel to smooth, Too Smooth to Be Forgotten, but it's got a little Got a little tooth to it, a little grit if I want something to be a little grungier. So you can see that, that texture there. But it's got that same pressure sensitivity, which I like. And again, you can do smoothing, same. And turn that up, get a smoother line. There's a couple other rough brushes that I like for doing line work by Retro Supply Co. Um, the Sublimer one is pretty cool. It's similar, but it's a little rougher and a little less um, dramatic in the shift from pressure sensitivity. And then there's also the Retro Supply Co Classic Anchor. This is a good one too. It's got a little more tooth to it, but it's, and it's got a lot of pressure sensitivity. I don't know why I'm just drawing squiggly lines. Maybe I should draw something sweet, like. A face, all the big nose, and a mouth, and teeth. And he's looking over there. Ah! Oh, ruined it, ruined it, hot garbage. That's why I like working digitally because if that was on a piece of paper, it'd be game over. Can't recover from that. So because my work is very line based, those kind of line work brushes are the most important thing to me and those are the ones that I use the most. So sometimes I just use very simple coloring techniques where it's just a fill color and it's nice and flat. So I wouldn't even use a brush to do that kind of thing. I would just use the paint bucket tool. One of the cool things about Fresco is that you can set your line work layer as a reference. So if I hit set re as reference, I can go ahead and do a new layer below that and then pick a color and then can go ahead and just tap that and you'll see that our uh, color is on its own layer, which is pretty cool. If I want a little more grit from trying to make it like a vintage -y print look, I really like the Retro Supply Rezo brushes, which I'm going to do a whole video about showing my process using those. But I'll just quickly show you those since I'm talking about the tools that I like. I'm going to go in my brushes here, and then Rezo Dry. If I have a new layer here and I want it to color, I just kind of go in. You see, you get this nice texture, which is pretty cool. These Rezo brushes um, overlay too, which is kind of fun. So if you had another color, um, even on the same layer, you could just go on top of it and they'll blend nicely. See the difference? Um, or you could do those on, uh, on a separate layer as well and get the same effect. So Fresco can use any, any Photoshop brushes. So when you go to add, you can just import files if you have Photoshop brushes that you like, and then you can just pull those in. If you're interested in any of these brushes, aside from the Kyle Webster brushes, because those are already available in Fresco, 
Um, I really like the Retro Supply brushes. They've got a lot of really cool ones, and I have a link uh, in the description to that if you want to go check those out. So if I finish an illustration in Fresco, it, it'll automatically save, and then I can move over to my computer, and then I can just open it up in Photoshop and you know do any finalization I need to do or export the specific kind of file a client might need. I think that's a really convenient thing about working in Fresco is the flexibility to go back and forth between Photoshop or Illustrator and then back into in Fresco if you wanted to. This is a quick little tour of my studio. It's a relatively small room, so probably just going to show you some details and stuff that I have around. This is a helmet that I drew all over with a Sharpie. That's Danzig. That's Lionel. That's a patch that Josh made. We got a robot, we got some Arkrum trading cards. We got Danzig, a little Miata. This is a gas tank from a 70s Honda motorcycle. This is a Nickelodeon activity book that I did the artwork for. Some other books of mine. Some Lego packaging I worked on, a seat for GT. Here's some books that I have. Stimpy, Green Alien, more books. Some students made me this pizza book and it's super sweet. This is a drawing that Josh Lafayette made and his wife stitched into this amazing piece, uh, Idols artwork. It's me and Shanna. Hulk! BMX trophy. Japanese candy. Ren. A skull Josh made. A Danzig pencil. It's the other side of my studio where my desk is. Some stuff on the wall. Some artwork. Krista Perry print, Robot, Greg Kletzel, Kirk Wallace, Tallboy. I just wanted to take a quick second to say, if you're enjoying this, can you just uh, go ahead and like this video? Give me a little thumbs up. It's really helpful in getting this video seen. Uh, I've been getting lots of positive feedback, which is super great and makes me feel encouraged to keep going. So um, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know what kind of videos you want to see, maybe subscribe, let me know what you think about the uh, Cintiq or the iPad. Do you use an iPad? Do you use a Cintiq? Do you use paper? Okay, good talk.